Welcome, everybody, as the American Space Museum helps you stay curious. I'm Mark Marquette, and we've been doing a Stay Curious program live on Facebook for a year and a half. I'm talking about Marty Winkle and myself, and we've got the Trekkie Techie computer whiz may, taking this to the next level, Jessica Galloway. We thank her for all she does to teach Marty and me some old dogs, some new tricks for sure, like this beautiful background of the earth behind me. As we celebrate today, astronauts in space, we've got an astronaut birthday. We're going to look at uh, uh, a little object that we have in our museum, and we're going to talk about a late Challenger astronaut's birthday today. So let's kick it off by telling you to hope that you share, tell your friends to watch Stay Curious on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch. And because uh, for 20 years we've been preserving the birth of the American space age, and programs like this and our exhibits help inspire the next generation of space workers. So like us, share us, follow us, subscribe to us, <clears throat> get the frog out of my throat, and best importantly, tell your friends that they're going to get some, some very interesting space content we think that you don't get anywhere else. Hmm. As I clear myself, we want to thank Martin McClellan, who works at Via Space as an engineer. And on behalf of the Marie Louise G. West Endowment Fund, we brought you a oral history and conversation with Martin McClellan, who talked yesterday all about the contamination engineering that he did to keep bugs and dirt and everything off of the Hubble telescope and uh, dander off your hair, so forth and so on. Very interesting conversation with Martin, and we're looking forward to him coming back and talking about his role at Via Space, which is our hometown rocket company that's going to launch small payloads with plastic and then, of course, a, a, a accelerating fuel. So we're going to kick off today a little bit with uh, humans in space. And here are the next four astronauts going to space. Let me give your their names left to right. Find my my sheet here. Um, is uh, oh there, uh, well no that's the um, oh I don't have their names I'm embarrassed that I don't there um, the man on the left is a shuttle astronaut where have I got their names somewhere oh well there we are aha <clears throat> never fail live stay curious program here we thank everyone for hanging with us. Thomas uh, Mashburn is on his third flight. He's the pilot because uh, a rookie astronaut, Rajah Sherry, uh, is the uh, commander, and they named their crew dragon Endurance. And um, next is uh, Kayla Barron. She's on the right. And Math uh, Matthias uh, Maurer is uh, from the European Space Agency in the middle there. And uh, their crew dragon capsule crew three is named Endurance. All right, Marty, was I misspoken there? I thought you said the commander is the rookie. He is the rookie, yes. The pilot is Tom Mashburn there. On uh, That's Tom Mashburn, and uh, that is Char Raja Chari, and he's the commander of the flight. Not Charlie sure exactly why. Mashburn's the pilot. <clears throat> and Mashburn's, uh, uh, his third flight having uh, uh, in Expedition 30, he's got 161 days in space, and the other three are rookies. So we'll be adding more humans to our space count. But what's going to be interesting, it's going to be happening here in the next week, in two weeks, is we're going to see this crew launched on uh, about 2.30 in the morning on Halloween morning Sunday. I forget exactly when. The, no, it's the 31st. They switched it for a... Uh, uh, moved it back a day. Uh, don't know why, but they did. So it is... a. Uh, uh, the morning of uh, Halloween, morning, Sunday, October 31st, about 2.20 a.m., something like that. I, I didn't write that down exactly. And uh, don't forget that up there right now are these three astronauts of China. All right, not going to, well, let me have a stab at it there. How about Zai, Wang, and Yi are on there right now. Uh, Wang is the lady on the right. This is her second space flight. Uh, the commander, it's his uh, second space flight also, and there's a rookie on board. So they are going to do some hard hat uh, construction on, the, on their space station uh, called Tangong Heavenly Palace. And uh, they've opened it up to other nations to come up to their space station. However, the United States does not have any agreements with China 
In fact, I think we're prohibited from working with them. So when we, when that crew goes up a Halloween morning, they will be greeted by these seven astronauts of Expedition 65. And with the Chinese up there, it'll make 14 humans in space the first week of November, the most in human history. 13 was the record. So it's exciting that we're kind of losing track of one who's an astronaut. Well, I don't want to argue who is and who isn't. Our good friend Tim Gagnon, the patch guy that some of you love buying Tim's uh, commemorative patches, and he's done four or five crew missions or more for the space, uh, uh, shuttle and space station. Tim Gagnon, I like what he says. What are we arguing about? This is what we've all wanted, more humans going to space. Let's quit quarreling and picking over who's an astronaut or not. But we're keeping track of the uh, the astronauts as being orbital uh humans orbiting the earth and we're going to call them karma knots the suborbital astronauts so the number's growing exponentially it'll grow over the next 20 years for sure so it'll be interesting to have 14 uh humans in space here in uh, just about a, a couple of weeks time so yes we've got a comment jessica says that windows 2 11 a.m according to space coast launches uh, okay visitors Bureau, uh, site and Robert says Orion for Artemis 1 now stacked on SLS. Yes, it is. Yep, we will. They are putting the Orion, the that'll be the uncrewed Orion. Thank you, Robert, for watching us on your big TV screen yes, and in uh, uh, Dundee, Scotland. And uh, uh, we'll be talking more about that as the weeks go, as they getting close to launching this demo mission. It'll be so exciting. We'll have a lot of time to talk about it because, believe you me, we're all going to be excited when we see that rocket start crawling out the pad 39B and standing out there for a month or so while they're checking it out. And you'll be seeing pictures I'm going to be taking of that from uh, a great vantage point at our uh, Merritt Island National Preserve out there. It's a great site of 39B from out there. So, all right, we have got also... Uh, we get those 14 astronauts up there. That'll be some history making. We've got another astronaut we want to talk about. This young lady, Nicole Stott, has written this book, Back to Earth, which is Back to Earth, What Life in Space Taught Me About Our Home Planet and Our Mission to Protect It. I am Nicole is going to be here Saturday, November 20th. Uh, doing a book signing from 11 to 2 o'clock, and then we'll have her on a Stay Curious Live. Uh, Saturday uh, we have special Saturday edition of Stay Curious. I've met this lady several times, and some of you space uh, Stay Curious lovers out there have, and you know what a wonderful person she is. And her after her uh, about 120 days in space, she had a three-month ISS expedition mission. I think it was Expedition 23. And then she was on the final mission of uh, Discovery 133, which our friend Tim Gagnon had something to do with that beautiful patch of STS-133. And uh, I'm reading her book. I'm reading it, Nicole. It's amazing. She is a very good writer. Her introduction will blow your mind as she sets up that she's got seven chapters in here, not a to-do list, as she calls it, but a ways of being list ways to act and ways to be, uh to uh combat the, the global warming and uh her me her mes message is three things one we are all earthlings we two we are on a planet orbiting a star and three there's only one border we should think about and that is the thin blue line that keeps us safe on earth and uh, she loves talking about that we are crewmates on spaceship earth not passengers we are crewmates the distinction being we've got to get along we've got to work together and and uh, we all have a part in driving our spaceship earth uh, around the sun and keeping it the hospitable place we want to be so we're going to go crazy with nicole stott's visit we've got some things cooked up uh for fun and and uh uh, she's a delight to have around, and uh, you're going to hear more about her on Stay Curious when I have a conversation with her about this book and her new life, uh, uh, wanting to make people aware of who we are as Earthlings on this, this uh, spaceship Earth. Uh, I'll be talking more about that than her being an astronaut, but she's a fabulous astronaut, first astronaut to do a watercolor in space. She is using art and space as a way of healing. 
uh, uh, people's uh, uh, physical illnesses and mental illnesses. And uh, you're going to love knowing more about Nicole Stott because we're also hoping to follow her down to Antarctica when she's going December 4th for a total eclipse of the sun. And we've told her, take us along with you, yeah, uh, take us with us. And she's thinking about that, ways to do that. She's on Twitter. So she's a Twitter person and uh, loves sharing her life on there. Well, let's speak of one other astronaut uh, who's had a great life. Let's look here at uh, Ura to Marine. Doug Hurley having his 55th birthday today. Double nickel to you. Born in uh, 19, October 21st, 1966 in Endicott, New York. But he spent his childhood in Appalachian, New York. He is married to retired astronaut uh, Karen Nyberg, uh, who's actually got more days in space than him on a, a long expedition. Um, he was a, a, a pilot on STS-127 and, and 135, the final flight of Atlantis. And then he was, interestingly, the pilot on the final American flight to, la to launch off of the Space Coast. And then 11 years later, he was the pilot, he was the commander of the Crew Dragon Demo-2 that took him and Bob Behnken to space, the first commercial flight in history, of course, SpaceX, he, uh, and um, the first launch in 11 years off, off of Kennedy Space Center. Uh, he's the first Marine to fly an F-A-18 Super Hornet, and Hurley's call sign nickname is Chunks. So, uh, Chunks, a big, happy double nickel 55 to you. Uh, he's an active astronaut, and I'm sure we'll probably see him fly in space again, gang. Well, another item in space history I cooked up, uh, didn't cook up, I found on this date, October 21st, 1965. The bubble-type helmet was approved for Apollo uh, extravehicular activity uh, designed by the Crew Systems Division engineers Robert Jones and James O'Kane. And the new helmet was smaller and lighter than earlier types, uh, and it demonstrated its superiority in comfort, visibility, and on and off. They call it dawn and doff characteristics. And this is the fit check helmet we have in our museum uh, from um, uh, uh, the commander of Skylab 4. Uh, I blanked out there. Who is this? Who, it says um, Jerry Carr. Jerry Carr. I didn't make a Jerry Carr note on there. God bless Jerry Carr. He died uh, about a year ago. You'd think he was the twin of our chairman of the board, Charlie Mars. They look very much alike. And uh, uh, he was a great guy, good to our museum, a rookie commander of Skylab 4, the third crewed mission of Skylab. They called the Skylab launch itself of the space station uh, Skylab 1. So he was Skylab 4. And here we have his fit check helmet, the bubble helmet that in 1965 was approved for use in space there. So we love that. And also to kind of keep it in our backyard uh, with things going on uh, around the Space Coast, here is our beautiful Gemini Monument Gallery, and they have been renovating them, they being the Brevard County uh, uh, Maintenance Group. They're, uh, they're in charge of the parks, our Gemini Parks, where we have a Mercury. This is the Gemini Gallery. Look at the two for the Gemini there. I know many of you have stood right here behind that is uh, General Tom Stafford's hand prints in bronze. They're outlined in tape there a little bit because the crews were putting the final, uh, after it had primer on it for about three months, they put uh, the final layer over these monuments here. I wanted to point out that the twos in the background for Gemini and below, that is standing on what is carved in, engraved in granite, space workers. Uh, names on there and we can still get if you worked in Gemini we can get your name on there or your loved one by a hundred dollars is all it takes and they put them up about twice a year because uh, the, they have to be carved by a professional in granite but to the right of that is the vehicle assembly building that little square you see on the horizon is the giant VAB across the Indian River as seen from our beautiful Space View Park there is Ed White who passed away before we harvested the handprints uh, in bronze. And so uh, 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 he, we have a profile of his sculpture in there. Uh, and that was done by um, a Sandy Storm was the artist that did this. And there's the row looking towards the Apollo uh, and shuttle gallery 
uh, towards the downtown Titusville. Uh, and they look very attractive. Uh, the rebarb that they put in them in 2000 wasn't uh, properly uh, uh, the proper rebarb, and it was rusting through. So they found they found a way to uh, fix it, and uh, uh, we're grateful for that. And uh, looks beautiful, and they're really sprucing up all of Space View Park after it was damaged by Hurricane Irma over four years ago. Well, let's see. We got the bubble helmet out of the way. We got the Gemini monuments, and we wanted to have, on a on a not so sad note, but uh, uh, we want to deal with reverence. This gentleman here, Ron McNair's birthday is today, and he lost his life on the Challenger tragedy. He would have been 71 today, born in Lake City, South Carolina. He lost his age at age, age 35. Here he is on his first shuttle mission on STS-41B. There was an eight-day mission with his beret. He's like a director in space there because they were doing some uh, movies in space. That was the first, uh, I think, 41B was Bruce McCandless's flight. Uh, there was four rookies, uh, and Vance Brand, the third, that was the commander on his third flight. Uh, McNair was an accomplished saxophonist, and before his last fatal mission, he was working with composer Jean Michael Jarre on a piece of music uh, that was going to be. He was going to lay down some tracks on a cassette player in the uh, Challenger, and then bring him back to be on. Uh, Jean-Michael Jarre's upcoming album, Rendezvous. And it was to be the first solo piece of original work to be uh, performed in space. So we honor uh, here in Titusville at Sandpoint Park, we honor our fallen astronauts in a beautiful uh, circle of plaques that is around the flag there at Sandpoint Park. It's just uh, north of our museum a little bit. And there's the plaque for Ron there. I wanted to show the... the uh, 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 that it's, you know, I could just take a picture of the plaque, but I wanted to show you a little bit of the surrounding area there, uh, taste of Florida. Uh, he is, uh, Ron McNair, when he was a young boy, he refused to leave the segregated Lake City, South Carolina Public Library without being allowed to check out books. His mother was called. She stood behind him. All right. They called the police. Guess what? He left with his books checked out. And uh, that building now bears his name. And uh, uh, he's buried at a memorial park named for him in his hometown of Lake City, South Carolina. So God bless the family of Ron McNair. We, we honor you uh, and, and uh, what a beautiful man and a beautiful flight he had. The second African-American in space, okay, behind Guy, Guy Bluford. And uh, uh, real, real, real paved the way for sure because that, uh, as we've talked to many African Americans, not a few of them that have worked out there. Uh, uh, everyone was dealt with respect, but you always had a few knuckleheads out there uh, wanting to uh, uh, make trouble. And uh, like that movie. But Ron McNair, God bless you, seventy-one today, and uh, we hope I posted something just a little bit on Facebook to honor this man. So, well, we want to get to something kind of fun but serious about our American Space Museum. We need to find ways to raise money all the time and to sustain this program, uh, 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 take some money in equipment that we bought. And so Karen Conklin, our executive director, and I came up with a way to honor people that gave us more than $100 by creating a constellation with a star on it. And uh, you give each star, the big, the more money you give, the bigger the star. And that seemed to go over pretty well. And we help, uh, took it to Jessica Galloway here, our Trekkie Techie, and she created this star for us. Uh, and the constellations there represent $12,000 that have give, been given to us. The biggest star is the $5,000 from the Marie Louise G. West Endowment Fund. Mike McCulley is the astronaut in the upper right. Joanne Morgan, thank you for your nice email that you sent Karen and I was sent. She um, uh, was grateful for the star at the tip there, the bottom of the heart. Joanne Morgan, of course, the first woman engineer in the Apollo era, but she went on to do other great things uh, uh, in NASA uh, as a manager. And uh, so we're grateful for her uh, there. Uh, uh, there, The Galloways there, uh, they helped us a lot with uh, buying a, a video card we needed there. So 
been Jessica helped us come up with Karen and I thinking about we want to there's 88 constellations in the sky and so we're going to create our own little zodiac first of, of 12 or 13 because there are 13 constellations in the zodiac Ophiuchus is one and so Jessica came up with a great idea to create a galaxy of giving so this is our galaxy of giving push that we are now going to take money for our second constellation all right and we've already gotten some donations and we're going to do drum roll to reveal our new constellation there are the first two stars aerodyne chaired by andy allen the astronaut and ceo of uh, this company aerodyne pledged three thousand dollars recently and his when Andy was on the show, uh, uh, and you want to see that very good conversation. Another uh, uh, fighter. He's a marine, right? Hey, uh, Andy's Andy's an Ura marine, and his nickname uh, was Slick. Uh, Andy Slick Allen. So, uh, and somebody asked him that on our Stay Curious program. So, got to tease you, Andy. But they pledged three thousand dollars, and then Andy's brother Mark said to give. Uh, uh, right away sent us a thousand dollars okay so we've already got four thousand dollars in our new constellation of giving and drum roll for the reveal no, we're not going to show it until it's done right oh i thought we okay there's 14 okay all right we we uh didn't get our production things there i thought you were going to show the outline to fill in but that's fine we're going to show you where the stars are and then reveal what this constellation looks like as you help fill it in with well, donations well. of over a hundred dollars or more well, so we're looking for 12 more people to uh to join our galaxy of giving uh most of this money is going to go to our stay curious program uh, because we need to get Marty more money so he can buy better golf clubs. <laughs> I'm kidding. You need to buy me a scooter. Marty's a volunteer. I am paid. Jessica's a volunteer. God bless him. We use the money wisely here at our American Space Museum. But what you're giving, you earmark it for Stay Curious, and we'll find a way to, to use it for that. So thank you. Here is Cheap Development, Jessica's Hatching Dreams into Reality. There she is in her science uniform as a Trekkie Techie. So we're grateful for all that she's done to help us. So we'll be hearing more about this as we fill in our galaxy of giving with our new constellation that we've already got $4,000 uh, sent to. You can send that money by going to our PayPal account up on our website. We will uh, pin this up at the top once in a while on our Facebook page. And Jessica, who has become our social media guru, will know how to handle all that. Info at AmericanSpaceMuseum.com for any questions. But you can go to our website. Go up at the top is a donation button, and there you can add money to it. So before we get this earthling out of here, we have a comment. I think my husband may have linked the Andy Allen interview on YouTube in the comments. So driving a little traffic to that if you want to revisit it. Okay. We need that watch time. Good. We've got Andy Allen on YouTube. We need to get 4,000 hours of viewing on there after we've got 1,000 uh, of you following us on YouTube. And I think you all are enjoying watching it on YouTube, including our chairman of the board, Charlie Mars. Hi, Charlie. God bless our godfather out there keeping careful eye over the operation here like he has for 20 years. Charlie Mars is so instrumental in getting those handprints that I showed you on the uh, pi uh, on the uh, stands out there at Gemini. And uh, in fact, I sent him pictures of those today to help him keep up with uh, the progress around here. Uh, one of our national treasures, just like Marty Winkle, who's helping me for a year and a half, helping you all stay curious. Marty working on the Grumman Lunar Modules, and we're getting into the Apollo 12 and then in November and Apollo 17 in December. And, of course, uh, we're grateful for Jessica Galloway and what she's done to take this to the next level. Our whole staff here is just humming on all cylinders. we got a lot of stuff cooking. We're going to bring back STEAM education for our kids after the first of the year. But we've got people working on that. So uh, never a dull moment at the American Space Museum. And we need you to come and visit us. So please do. And until our next program tomorrow with Triple T, I'm Mark Marquette. Come into our museum and come watch Stay Curious tomorrow to bridge the space between us.